We are in the middle of a platform fighter renaissance. Games like Brawlhalla, Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl, and especially Multiverses prove that there's a huge interest in platform fighters outside of Smash. It's only a matter of time before every company with more than three characters to their name decides to get on on the fun, and I could not be more thrilled. Even when done poorly, these games are just so much fun. There's just something about them that puts them leagues above traditional fighting games for me. Some of them even give us a chance to see characters from different franchises interact in ways they would never have otherwise. You can watch Princess Peach fight Minecraft Steve. You can finally watch Avatar Aang and Avatar Korra throw it down. You can watch Superman fight LeBron James. The hype surrounding one of these is always a blast to watch. Fans discussing possible characters, moveset ideas, which franchises should get represented. They somehow discuss the metagame before the metagame is even a thing. All this talk gets me wondering what other major IPs would make for a good platform fighter. You saw the title of this video, so you know where this is going. Pixar is easily one of the best film studios out there, rivaled only by Disney with the amount of iconic movies in their lineup. Toy Story, Monsters Inc., Up, Inside Out, Luca, The Incredibles, the list goes on. You can always count on one of their movies for a good time. And just so we're clear, these are Disney movies, these are Pixar movies. Know the difference. Disney usually goes from nerd stuff to princess stuff to nerd stuff to princess stuff to nerd stuff and so on. Meanwhile, Pixar goes, hey, what if blank had emotions? What if toys had emotions? What if the monster under your bed had emotions? What if emotions had emotions? What if teenagers had emotions? What if this joke was original? So I had an idea. What if Pixar made their own platform fighter? What would the roster look like? Which stages would work best? How would the movesets work? How would each movie be represented? Basically, what if Smash Bros, but Pixar? Today we're going to do a little bit of brainstorming as we imagine a Pixar platform fighter. First off, let's set some ground rules. Rule 1. Each movie gets one, maybe two characters to represent it. By the end, we don't want a roster that's too big. There might be an exception here to there, but this rule is going to mostly remain unbroken. Rule number two. This hypothetical game is going to mainly be inspired by how the Smash Bros series works, if you couldn't already tell. But yeah, that's the platform fighter I've played the most, so it only makes sense. Rule three. Each character will have a side B, a down B, a neutral B, an up B, and a final smash like a finishing attack. If the character transforms, each one will likely have its own set of attacks. And if we don't mention the character's directional attacks, just assume it's just a punch or a slash. Rule 4. Each movie will get one stage, one icon, one or two assist trophies, one, technically two items because each will get a food item, and its rep will get four alternate costumes and four taunts. Also, special thanks to Fiodex for the icons. I wanted to have some custom designs, and I think she did a great job. Her socials are in the description. Alright, I think that's everything. Right now we're going to focus on five movies, in no particular order. There will be light spoilers for each one, so if you haven't seen it yet, skip ahead. Now with all that said... Let's get brainstorming. Our first movie is Luca. The icon will be a Vespa, the single most treasured thing in the film. The stage will be Porto Rosso, with the heart of the town as the battlefield. Our assist trophy is going to be Julia. She aids the player by riding around the stage in her cart and dropping fish. We can have it so that the fish damage opponents and heal the user on impact. Our rep is Luca and Alberto. These two are the same character but with different skins, kind of like Olimar and Alf. They'll be middleweight characters with a focus on strategically switching to and from their sea monster forms. In case you were unaware, Luca and Alberto are sea monsters who can turn into humans when they aren't touching water. So by pressing down B, they can switch to and from their sea monster form for about 30 seconds before the water dries and they turn back. Or they can press down B while in the sea monster form to turn back into humans. Now let's go over the actual moves. While they're human, their neutral B has them throw a random assortment of marine litter at the opponent. His side B has Luca pull out a Vespa and drive around the stage, kind of like Steve or Wario's side B. Luca's Vespa is red, like the one in his dream sequences, and Alberto's is the makeshift one they make at the start of the movie. His up B has him attempt to swim upward with no avail. This does a decent amount of damage, but barely works as a recovery. So it's best to be in the sea monster form if you're trying to recover. In his sea monster form, they'll each get a weapon. Luca gets his little fish farming staff, and Alberto has a fishing spear. Their directional attacks all use this weapon. His neutral B has him throw out fish that flop around the stage, damaging opponents. Think Duck Hunt's neutral B, but with fish. With his side B, he charges up and swims across the stage super quickly. It's weaker than the Vespa, but much faster. His up B has him successfully swim upwards in a stream of water. For Luca's skins, we got one in his human clothes, and the other one can be the leaf pants he had when he first came out of the water. Alberto obviously has his normal clothes, and for his alt, we can have... Wait. 
guys, I think Alberto has the same fit throughout the entire movie. I don't think he changes outfits a single time. Okay then, we'll have to get a little creative. He can wear the deep sea diver outfit that Luca wears during the competition. I know it's not lower accurate, but the outfit came from his hut, so it's not too out of place. For their first taunt, they can do that interesting attempt at walking Luca does when he first gets out of the water. Another has them do the sea monster pose Alberto does when he reveals himself to Julia. One has them daydream as a bunch of Vespas appear around their head. And the last can have them eat pasta with their hands while occasionally looking up before continuing. Speaking of pasta, one of the items is pesto pasta, a meal the characters are seen eating multiple times throughout the movie. And the other is a throwing spear that can be picked up and thrown at any time, but disappears after a few hits. And lastly, his final smash is a cutscene based one. The players who get hit with it will be put in a boat that's stocked and eventually sunk by Luca and Alberto. <laughs> Next up is Turning Red. The icon is a silhouette of a panda to represent May's transformation to and from the beast. We have a few stage options to choose from. We can use the temple, we could use the spirit realm where May tries to get rid of the panda, we could use Tyler's roof, but I think the stage that best represents this movie is the Fort Town concert. It's the main drive of the story, it's where the final conflict takes place, it's the perfect choice. It'd be visually similar to the Punch Out stage, but like, a boy band concert. We can even have a stage hazard where a bunch of ravenous fans come out of nowhere and trample the player. For our assist trophy, we obviously have to have May's friends, but finding out what they can do, that's where it gets a little tricky. Maybe we can have them turn the stage into a camera and constantly get in front of it making goofy faces. Yeah, that works. Our rep is obviously gonna be Mei Lin. I swear not every rep is gonna be the main character, but like, who else are we gonna pick other than the kid who can turn into a red panda? She's gonna be a lightweight, heavyweight hybrid whose main thing is poofing in and out of the panda form with certain attacks. We're gonna handle the transformation a little differently this time around. Instead of you switching between the forms at will, certain attacks will have Mei switch into the panda, similar to how she does at the end of the movie. Her down special will have her panda's tail come out as she spins around, a little nod to Mario's tanuki suit. Her side and up special has her punch with a panda fist in the respective direction. Her up B has her poof into the air and into the panda. She doesn't turn back until she touches the ground. Her side B has her charge and poof into the direction she's facing, kind of like Luigi's side B. Her neutral B has her charge up her fist and throw a dodgeball. When it makes impact, it bounces directly into the air, again, hitting anything it comes in contact with. The chance of someone being right above your opponent is slim, but it can still happen. And her down B has her turn into the panda and throw her claws out. Anything closer will get instantly buried. So she's basically a fighter the size of Mar Mario with attacks like Donkey Kong. Yeah, it's kind of unfair, but we're here for brainstorming, not balancing. One skin can be the outfit she wears for most of the movie, the second can be the same outfit but with her jacket tied around her, one can be the kimono she wears during the blood moon, and the last can be her cardboard cutout panda. As for taunts, the intro gives us a ton to work with. One can be this little dance she does. If I lost to a maid doing this, I'd probably destroy my console. Another can be this ballerina spin she does before falling. One can be her stir the porridge dance. And the last can be an animation where she tries to calm down but ends up turning into the panda. The food item can be one of the dumplings that the dad makes, and the normal item can be a dodgeball. Kind of basic, but it's used in the movie, so it's fair game. And finally, her final smash is her mom. Like, actually. Think Bowser's final smash, but with a giant red panda. She slams and slashes the stage before disappearing. Maybe we can put Mei on Ming's shoulder to avoid confusion for people who haven't seen the movie. Next up, we got one of the most underrated films in Pixar's lineup. Onward. Seriously, I will never understand the hate this movie gets. But anyway, the icon is the top half of the magic staff Ian gets from his dad and uses throughout the movie. The stage can be one that switches from location to location, kind of like that one Animal Crossing stage. Any road trip movie will likely get this treatment. Our assist trophy can be the fairy game. If they catch an opponent, they latch onto them and gradually do damage. The other assist trophy can be Barley. He rides around the stage in his car, Guinevere, burying any player he runs over. Our rep is gonna be Ian. Believe it or not, he's actually the only magic user in the entire movie. He's a middleweight character who uses different types of spells to fight. His neutral B is Boom Bastia. After charging the attack, he'll send out a flurry of blasts at his opponents. His side B is Voltar Thunderseer. Ian will shoot a strike of lightning in front of him. Think Robin's neutral B, but with a little less range and a lot less concentration. His down B is Brizigar and Vizia. He'll glow blue and have the ability to walk on air. He can do this until he jumps, but can reactivate it in the air. It's kind of like Steve's building blocks, but invisible, and he can walk in a straight line. His up B is a loft Elevar. He grabs an opponent directly above him and slams them to the ground. It's kind of like a grab, but with a lot more range. If an item is above him, he can levitate it towards him. Now for skins, we're gonna need to get creative. His default is obviously his normal outfit with his plaid up shirt and his old navy jeans. His second can be the same thing, but with his dad's sweater. The third can be him in Barley's jean vest. 
and the last one could be a wizard's cloak. I don't care if it's not lower accurate, it looks cool. One of his taunts can be this dance. There's a lot of dancing in these movies. This dance he does with his dad. Another can be him accidentally making his head big and quickly reversing it. We can have one where he juggles a ball using magic, and the last can be him rubbing his face and accidentally spreading marker on it. He rubs it off before the taunt ends. As for items, one can be the manticore sword. You could probably guess what it does. And the food item can be a Cheeto. Like the one they used to get across the water. His final smash is another cinematic one. He curses his opponents and sends them to the rock dragon scene at the end of the movie. It roars and incinerates the enemy. Despite being the least popular film on this list, I think we represented Onward pretty well. But seriously, go watch it if you haven't already. Next up we got Soul. The icon is an earth badge with a music note in the middle to represent Joe's love of music as long as his ticket back home. The stage obviously has to be the great before. The only other option is downtown New York. In the background we can have some of the Jerry's just chilling with some souls and we can hide Terry around the map to reference how she travels in the movie. The assist trophy is a lost soul. When summoned it chases and stomps out the opponent, burying them to the ground. Our rep is going to be... <coughs> Joe, 22, Moonwind, and Abraham Lincoln. Again, same character, different skin. And technically it works because souls can shapeshift. Joe's a lightweight character with his main gimmicks being summoning abstract objects from the great before, becoming hypothetical to avoid damage, and morphing his body. I'll just add that his jab is the slapping animation 22 does. Just thought I'd mention that. For his neutral B, he summons a tiny soul that goes around attacking other players. It dies in one hit, but it's still a useful distraction. Side B has him send out various objects from the great before. One could be a Luxo ball that bounces around the battlefield, damaging players that touch it. One could be a piece of pizza that jets forward. One could be a hose that sprays water. The whole point is randomness. The great before is a gateway to almost everything in the universe, so I thought we'd need a move that could represent that. His up B is a simple boost recovery, and when he loses control, he does that skydive animation he has when going back to Earth. With down B, Joe can become invincible for 20 seconds. In the movie, souls can't feel anything, so I wanted to find a way to incorporate that into his character, without making it too overpowered. In this, he would still take attacks, but he wouldn't be damaged by them. So he can still be knocked off the stage, but it'd be capped at the damage he had before he became invincible. He can use this once per stock. As for taunts, one can be Joe playing at the piano, another can be this cowboy dance 22 does in the trailer, one can be Moonwind sign spinning but in soul form, and the last can be the soul morphing to the face of their opponent and taunting them. One of Soul's items can be an Earth Badge. When collected, your character flies into the air and dive slams into the ground. Similar to Kirby's Warp Star. You may be wondering, how in the world does an Earth Badge make you do this? Well, when a Soul maxes out their Soul Badge, they can dive down to Earth. Is it a bit of a reach? Maybe. But it still makes sense. But thankfully the food item makes a little more. Need I say more? The final smash involves Joe summoning a portal to the great beyond and sucking in anyone nearby. Once inside, a cutscene plays of the opponent standing on the escalator while they wait for their ultimate demise. Last but not least is Coco. The icon is a skull, one of the only symbols that actually appears in the movie itself. It represents death and the day of the dead. Coco's stage is going to have a gimmick this time around. Every time a player dies, the stage will switch from Santa Cecilia to the land of the dead. That way we can represent both the land of the living and the land of the dead. Our assist trophy will be Pepita the giant saber tooth spirit animal thing. It flies off the stage and quickly swoops down, attempting to grab opponents. If successful, the players will be carried off the stage. For the first time ever, our rep is actually not the main character. Miguel simply doesn't have enough unique characteristics to turn him into a fighter. He's just a kid with a guitar. A talented kid with a guitar, but a kid with a guitar nonetheless. So our rep is gonna be Hector. Hector is, uh, dead, so he's a lightweight character who can take off his body parts and move them in a bunch of weird ways. His directional attacks all have him taking his left arm out of his socket and using it to attack. With his neutral B, he throws his entire head forward. If it hits a player, it'll damage them until they shake it off. For his side B, he throws a punch that breaks apart and extends farther. Kind of like Min Min's side B, but with less range and more skeletonness. His up B has him throw his head in the air with his body coming soon after. If the body makes impact with a player, it'll do a ton of damage. His down B has him pull out a guitar and strum it. Anyone in a certain radius will get knocked back. Kind of like Donkey Kong's final smash in Brawl, but with a lot more knockback. His skins include his default outfit, his female disguise, his human outfit. No, he's not going to be human. He'll just have his human clothes on. Our game will get age restricted if we show a human Hector juggling his body parts like toys. And the last alt can be, uh... 
Miguel's jacket. That way our boy still gets some spotlight. One of his taunts can be this dance he does while performing with Miguel. Another can have him take his head off and spin it on his finger like a basketball. One can have him spin his torso while tapping his feet. And the last can have him sit on a chair and slowly play the guitar. Items can be a tamale and a shoe. Miguel comes from a long line of shoemakers, so it makes sense. You pick it up and slap people with it. His final smash is another cinematic one where he ties his victims under a bell before singing up an escalator and eventually having the bell crush the players, in reference to Ernesto de la Cruz's death. Ladies and gentlemen, Coco. I feel bad for shifting my boy Miguel, but uh, be cooler, I guess. And with that, we have the first five movies for this hypothetical Pixar Smash Bros. platform fighter. We've got Luca and Alberto, May, Joe, Ian, and Hector. A pretty solid lineup if you ask me, but it's a little empty. We need some more fighters. So if you enjoyed this video and are interested in seeing more, let me know. Like up the video, tell me which movies you'd like to see next, and if you have any ideas you'd like to share, feel free to do so in the comments. In the meantime, you should check out some of my other videos, like this one. Yeah, you'll like this one.